In this episode, I want to explain to you how anyone can begin taking beautiful images in any genre of photography by simply learning my four essential rules to photography. Now, when I say my four essential rules, I'm not the one that created these rules, nor do I own them, nor am I the only photographer that knows about them. I like to call them my four essential rules because of the fact that they resonate with me. I have them all starting with an S. These four rules of that are essential to photography are subject, surroundings, simplicity, and settings. You might hear from another photographer and they might just have three rules to photography or two rules or no rules, but the bottom line is every photographer who is consistently capturing beautiful images plays by these same rules and operates within these same rules of photography. And that's what I hope to teach you about today so that you can begin learning them and taking ownership of them so that you can consistently start capturing beautiful images. These four rules are subject, surroundings, simplification, and settings. Understanding the importance of having a clear subject and using the surroundings of your subject in a way that puts the greatest focus upon it and simplifying the picture by making sure you reduce clutter and finally making sure you have the correct settings that will enable you to capture the image you were looking for or what it takes to begin capturing exceptional photographs on a consistent basis. The first essential rule we're going to look at is the most important of all the rules, and that is the importance of having a clear subject. A clear subject is vital to photography because a good photograph has a clear subject. And as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. And because this is true, it is very important that you have a clear subject in every image you take so that your subject can help tell the story you're trying to create. In the following photograph, is there a clear subject? Is there a story to tell? I believe so. In this image, my wife Lindsay is clearly the subject. And the story I'm hoping to tell with this image is her inner strength. We see her courageously standing before the dangerous shore break, as if to say, I will not be afraid. And there are several photographic techniques that are going on in this image as well. First, we have a colorful sign in the foreground that warns us of danger, and its bright colors complement the beautiful blue Hawaiian ocean. The sign also says, if in doubt, don't go out. And then we have my wife standing before the ocean, as if to say, I am not afraid. This image tells a clear story of courage. In addition to this, we see the rule of thirds, which we will discuss at a later time when we get more into composition. A good photograph will always have a clear subject and invite the viewers into the world of that subject. But without a clear subject, you are not going to inspire yourself as a photographer, nor will your photographs inspire others. But don't be intimidated by that. That's why we're here. That's what I hope to do is to help you, again, learn some essential rules for photography so that you can go out and capture beautiful images on a regular basis. The second essential rule we want to focus on is our surroundings. A good photograph uses its surroundings to focus attention upon the subject. When we talk about using the subject surroundings as one of our four essential rules for photography, I'm talking about using the subject surroundings in such a way that it places the most attention upon the subject, while at the same time making sure that your surroundings are not cluttered or distracting and taking away the attention from your subject. Whether it's capturing a beautiful landscape or sunset in the background or possibly blurring the background so that it emphasizes your subject even more. There are many ways to use your surroundings to help put the focus upon your subject. We have to work hard to use our surroundings to our advantage. Look at this image of a blue lizard. I've titled it In Living Color because of the beautiful colors that appear upon these male lizards during mating season. So hopefully there's an obvious double meaning to this title. Not only is this fellow living as a colorful creature, but when his colors come out, life is about to be produced. 
However, I captured this image in such a way that it really emphasizes the color with that rich green and reddish background uh, while he's walking across a very light colored surface. It just really makes the colors pop. And so this is one instance of where I use the surroundings of my subject to truly put the attention upon the subject in the best possible manner. Look at this next image here of a bison. I've titled this Bison Blues. And maybe it's not the background that you're using to put attention upon the subject. Maybe it's the foreground, just as I used in this image I captured of a bison in Yellowstone. You see, I noticed this bison crossing the street and heading toward the blue and white steam that was rising up from the hydrothermal basin. And the reason I've chosen to name this photo Bison Blues is not only because of the blue steam that is rising up from the hydrothermal basin at Yellowstone Park, but also because of the difficult history the bison has had to walk through. But I used the foreground of this image to help draw attention onto my subject. Finally, in this next image, we see a black Phoebe, a little songbird perched on top of a tombstone. And I've titled this image, Singing the Blues. The idea behind this image is that when I saw this bird perched upon the tombstone, I had my one to 400 millimeter lens on and I was able to walk around a bit to get the best vantage point. And once I noticed through the lens that the background all of a sudden turned blue, I couldn't tell you what the blue was, but I knew that this was the exact look that I wanted for this image at the cemetery. And this is why I've called it Singing the Blues. It's a songbird perched on a tombstone at a cemetery covered with blue. And so in the image of the lizard, the bison, and the black phoebe, I wanna make sure you see how I've creatively used the background and or foreground to add some beautiful color to the images. The third essential rule is keeping it simple. A good photograph simplifies. Keeping it simple, meaning you want to capture your image in such a way that you remove all distractions from the image. If you're at a park, you don't want to take a picture of a person with a pole sticking straight out of the back of their head, nor do you want a tree trunk going straight out from behind them as well. Maybe you're at the beach, and if you're at the beach and you're taking a picture of a couple or some friends, you don't want to take a picture with the sun directly behind them unless, of course, you want a silhouette of them. Take, for example, the image here that I shot. Not only is this image ruined because the main subject, which is the couple, is silhouetted, but there's also a lot of clutter in the background. I can see three other people behind them on the beach, and even if this picture was properly exposed, it would be ruined because of that. This picture is a dud for sure. However, this same couple in the right place on the beach with the right lighting can turn into an exceptional image. Here's an image of this same couple, and this time there's a fill light on them, which brings the subject back into the place where it is drawing attention and bringing us into their world. We have a couple that is enjoying a beautiful sunset at the beach in Southern California. This next image of the same couple is actually my favorite. This time they are silhouetted, but the silhouette truly adds to the image and tells a beautiful story of romance. Looking at this next series of images, we see some osprey that I featured in last week's episode. This first image here doesn't look too bad, but to be honest with you, it's very distracting to have the trunk of a tree and the branches cluttering the background of our subject. In this next image of the osprey, we see a telephone pole cluttering up the background. And here in this final image of the osprey, we see telephone wires once again cluttering up our image. Let's now take a look at a couple of photos of osprey that are not cluttered. Here we see the osprey with its wings spread wide as it soars through the beautiful blue skies. And in this final picture, we see another stunning image of the osprey looking straight at the camera as it soars through the sky. So I hope you can see that by removing clutter, the osprey takes center stage and creates a beautiful image for us to look at and appreciate. 
And so these are just a few examples of how important it is to remove clutter from our images by simplifying, making sure that we don't have distractions that are taking the attentions away from our subject. In every photo we take, we want to make sure we have a clear subject and that that clear subject is having our eyes drawn directly to it. The fourth essential rule is something that I'm just going to cover lightly in this episode just so you understand the importance of it. And that rule is settings, camera settings. Make sure your camera settings are correct so that your exposure is correct and that your subject is in focus. I will be devoting an entire episode to camera settings in the future, but for this episode, I just want you to understand what camera settings I am referring to and why they play an important role when you're trying to capture beautiful images. When I talk about camera settings being one of the four essential rules to capturing beautiful images, what I'm referring to is ISO, your shutter speed, as well as your aperture. Those three things play a vital part in you becoming an exceptional photographer who takes beautiful images on a consistent basis. And if these camera terminologies frighten you right now, don't worry about it. Just keep your camera in program mode or auto mode. And as you begin understanding the role of each of these three camera settings, you can start working with them more and really start to begin owning your camera and its settings and being able to better grasp what settings you need for any particular situation. So let's look at these three camera settings right now. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Your shutter speed enables you to control motion where you can freeze action by putting your shutter on a fast shutter speed like 1 500s, 1 1000s, or even up to 2500 or higher in order to freeze action. Your shutter speed also enables you to blur action if you're looking for a blurred effect. In fact, if you look at this picture that I have on the screen right now, I call this image the Karate Kid. I captured this image of a pelican in flight preparing to land while at La Jolla Shores. And I just love the way this pelican is frozen in the air as it reminds me of the famous crane move from the Karate Kid. Another image that I froze action on was this image of a pigeon that is featured in my Capturing Birds in Flight episode. In that episode, I share with you my camera settings and my approach to capturing birds in flight so that you have tack sharp images. But I just love the way this pigeon looks as its wings are frozen and you can see the detail in them. You can see the beautiful colors around the neck of this pigeon as well as the beautiful eyes and the reason I was able to capture this image and have it be so tack sharp is because I was able to use a fast shutter speed to freeze action. The next camera setting is your aperture. Your aperture allows you to blur the background to bring emphasis and focus onto your main subject or it also allows you to capture all of the beauty of your background say a sunset or a beautiful landscape or a cityscape. In this image here, you see that I used a large aperture so that I could blur the background of this image of a marmot in the Grand Tetons National Park. By blurring the background in this image, you can see that it really puts an emphasis on the marmot as well as the beautiful detail in the log that this marmot is resting upon. And the last setting we want to talk about is ISO, ISO. Your ISO is what controls the quality of your image, so to speak. The higher the ISO gets, the less quality and more grainy your image will appear. And so if at all possible, it's best to always try to have the lowest number ISO. When I'm shooting landscape images or portrait work, I'm always at ISO 100, 200 to 250 max. But a lower ISO means you're going to have a higher quality image with less grain. And we will look at all three of these camera settings in more detail in a future episode. So in this week's episode, we have been looking at my four essential rules for photography. Rules that are time tested and will enable you to begin taking beautiful photographs on a consistent basis. Now, if this information seemed to be a little overwhelming for you, just take a deep breath. We're gonna take our time over the next several weeks and really unpack all of the principles that I've been talking to you about in this episode to help you begin learning them and 
really implementing them into your life as a photographer. Next week, we're going to be looking at composition and some time-tested methods of composition that will also help you take better pictures. If you have found this information helpful, would you do me a big favor and hit the like button as well as the subscribe button? Because this informs YouTube that you like this content and you wanna see more of it, and it also helps me to get my channel out to a broader audience. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great week, and now go out and capture the world.